Hi, I'm Sheila Whiteman, and welcome to Let's Get It Started, the show with a focus on fitness. Have you ever wondered exactly what does a chiropractor do? Well, we're gonna answer that question for you today because we have a chiropractor here as our guest speaker. After that, we're gonna do a little bit of Pilates because we still want to keep into the same theme, keeping our bodies and in alignment and keeping our abdominal muscles nice and strong to protect our back. So today you'll need some water, but we're gonna use a mat on the floor. Come on back with me. Let's get it started. Hi, and welcome back. As promised, we have a guest speaker today, and he is Dr. Scott Campman, and he's from Total Wellness Chiropractic Center. He's going to give us a little bit of information on what chiropractic medicine is. So welcome, Dr. Campman. Thank, Thank you for, Thank you for me. coming. Can you tell us what is chiropractic medicine? Chiropractic is the science, art, and philosophy of treating the subluxation complex within the body. Okay, and so what is a subluxation? Subluxation is loss of proper motion and position of a spinal bone that puts pressure on the nervous system that can affect the body. Okay, um, and how does posture affect your health? Posture is very important to your health. Just like exercise is important to your health, the posture is probably the most important aspect of keeping your body healthy. If you look at uh, athletes and serious competitors, you will notice their posture is very upright and in a good position. You mm -hmm. don't see too many athletes hunched over in a bad position like that because they're not functioning at their best. They have to have a proper support system in order to function. Baseball players are very key on making sure their mechanics are right when they're throwing a baseball. So all that stuff adds up to health. All right, and so what does um, bad posture, what is the effect of bad posture then? on our bodies. Bad posture will actually cause a deterioration in the spinal bones and cause arthritis. The arthritis that we're talking about is osteoarthritis or wear and tear of the spinal segments and other parts of the bone. It's an overuse syndrome basically. It's not something that is inherited from your mom and dad just because they have it. it does not mean that you're necessarily going to get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I believe that we have a slide of what um, a spinal, the vertebrae look like. So maybe we can put the slide up and you can kind of explain a little bit about what we're seeing on the screen. Okay, the picture that you're seeing is what they call a motor unit. It's two vertebrae that actually form a joint in the body. Mm -hmm. the, the top port, uh, red part there is what a degenerated disc looks like. And the bulging area where it says herniated disc is putting pressure out on the yellow nerve. And that's where the nerves come from the spine and go to different uh, organs and tissues of the body. Right. And the parts on the left that you see are when they talk about bone spurs. That is actually calcium deposits as the body is trying to fix the problem on its own. The problem with that is it doesn't do it overnight. It does it over 10, 15, 20 years. And that's why this is a slow progressive condition that people don't necessarily feel right away. Okay, so you were talking a little bit about um, bony spurs and subluxations. I see we have a model here on the table. Can you explain a little bit to us about what this means? Sure. This is what we consider a normal spinal joint. You have the bones of the spine here and the disc that sits in between. The nerves exit the side of the spine. A nice healthy disc is nice and round and has a lot of shock absor absorption case capabilities. And when you look at how this bone moves, there should be flexibility in the spinal segments this way. Mm -hmm. So that's we have what, flexibility here and back and forth a little bit that right. way. Okay. And as the spine uh, gets knocked out of position and slowly progresses down this phase, here in what phase three is looking like, you see these sharp jagged edges, which are the bone spurs. And on the back part of the spine, the rough jagged edges are other bony growths. And when you compare the two, you can see there is some spacing in between here 
and on this side there is no spacing. Mm -hmm. And the problem that causes, this one moves very easy, and when you look at this, there is no more movement anymore. And this is what osteoarthritis does. It actually fuses the spine together. It also traps the nerve as it comes out and causes quite a bit of compression. If these nerves go out to the organs and tissues of your body, your body may not function as healthy as it could. So what um, are some general um, symptoms that you may feel if you have compression on the nerves coming out of the spine? Anything from headaches, neck pain, arm pain, lower back pain, sciatic or leg pain, uh, just numbness, tingling, burning sensations, okay. uh, a feeling of heaviness where your arms and limbs don't move as well as they should. So those are just some early signs that some people have or some advanced stages when they really start to feel it, it really in interferes with their life quite a bit. All right, and I believe we also have a picture for the audience who are viewing of um, spine in different phases of uh, subluxation and also then a larger picture so that mm -hmm. you might be able to explain to them a little bit about right. phase three, which is the um, progression. Right, the of, picture that you're mm -hmm. seeing now is what phase three looks like. You can barely see any spaces in between the bones where the bones are actually fusing. And this is a picture of the neck and there's actually two or three segments that are fused together and it looks like one solid bone. And this is, uh, can be a painful condition and sometimes it can't be, but it's very restricting to your motion and your flexibility. Okay. And okay. this one here is a picture of the middle part of the back and the dark spaces in between are where the discs are and the white sections that you see on the edges of the bone there is the calcium deposit being put down. And this is the middle part of the back and can cause a great amount of restriction in your breathing because the nerves and the ribs uh, attach to the middle part of your back. And then this picture here is the lower part of the back and you can see there's little gray lines in between and a lot of white areas where the calcium deposits are being set down trying to fuse the spine together. So the more calcium that you have and around your spine where it should not be, the more inflexible or less, less flexibility that you have exactly. in your spine. It's like treating it like a broken bone. That's what your body does is try to limit its mobility so it can heal. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not doing the healing. It's actually causing more problems later in life. And people typically see this as something I'm supposed to get when I get older. This is what we in chiropractic try to prevent from happening. If we catch that subluxation soon enough, we keep this process from happening. Okay. Motion is the key. Just like exercise, you have to move it or you will lose it. That is absolutely correct. You know I believe that, if nothing <laughs> else. Okay, and do chiropractic treatments hurt? Typically, no. Uh, some people might feel some soreness from the first treatment because their body is so stiff and so restricted or they're in a lot of pain to begin with, and we have to restore some of that normal motion to get the body to, to feel better. If the mu muscles have been tight that have supported the spine, and when they get stretched, they sometimes feel sore. It's like working out. You know, the first time you go and work out again, your body's going to be sore because you're oh, yes. using muscles that you haven't used. So mm -hmm. we, we do a nice general approach and work our way up. We don't go for 100% motion in one visit. Okay. And we're going to start wrapping this up. But um, besides um, doing the manipulations, which we really didn't talk about, but what else do you do in the chiropractic office? Say, for example, someone went to go see a chiropractor. What can they expect to happen? Well, we do a case history, find out what kind of injuries or traumas the person has had over their lifetime. Simple car accidents that they don't assume that they were hurt in usually starts this process to happen. And then 20 years later, they don't understand why they look like these two here. Mm -hmm. And they realize, well, I had a car accident, but I didn't get hurt. Well, inside you were hurt, outside you didn't feel it. Okay. So we do uh, an examination, orthopedic and neurological tests. We also take x-rays to see what the internal structure looks like. Okay. All right, well, I think that gives us a good idea of um, what a chiropractor does and what the benefits of chiropractic medicine is. Um, we also have the information, we have contact information that we're going to put on the screen for Dr. Campman. And thank you so much for coming in to You're give us welcome. the information. Um, I'm sure that our audience will find it very, very helpful. And really think about the next time you get injured, injured, or if you're not feeling as you should, your body's not working as you th should, thinks that it should, excuse me, think about the things Dr. Kempman has said and perhaps consider chiropractic medicine. Well, thank you so much. And we are going to come back and as promised, do our exercise. So get your mats ready. Don't try to just sit there and continue watching because we're going to come back and work. Again, thank you so much, you're very welcome. Dr. Kempman. My pleasure.
Excuse me. What time are you guys leaving? We're gonna rob your house tonight. Don't come closer. I have rabies. Don't you wish there were warnings to protect you from life's risks? With diabetes, there is one. It's called A1C, a simple blood test that helps measure your risk of serious complications. Learn more at diabetesa1c.org. We're back. Are you ready for some Pilates? We're going to start out. Before we start, let me just say hello and welcome to the two ladies who have been with me all along, and that is Marianne and Cherie. Again, thank you ladies for coming, and we're going to get started. Now, Pilates helps you to strengthen the muscles of your abdomen or your stomach muscles, which support and um, help to keep you from having back injury. So I thought that would be a nice segue since we had the chiropractor in here today talking to us about keeping our back healthy. So let's start by lying down. Lie down flat and I want you to bend your knees and have your legs up in a 90, 90 degree position. All right, we're gonna start out first with some breathing just to warm up our body and get that oxygen going into our uh, muscles. And we're gonna breathe in for five counts and then breathe out. So let's breathe in. And when you're breathing in, I want you to feel as if your lungs are filling with air. I want you to feel your abdomen expand. So you can place your hand on your abdomen and feel it rise and then fall and really push that air out. Again, another breath in. Really feel those ribs open up and expand and then go back in as you exhale. Let's try one more. Breathe in again. Feel those ribs open up and expand. Let all that air come in and then exhale. Push all the air out. Try to get the air even from the bottom of your lungs. Envision the air from the bottom of your lungs and try to pull that out and release that. Now we're gonna do imprinting, and what imprinting does is that that helps to stabilize your spine through the exercises. And that is the whole key to Pilates, because what you wanna do is bring your belly button in towards your spine and flatten your back down towards the mat. And hold it down like that, imprint it down, hold it for a breath, and then come back up. Inhale. Exhale and bring that belly button in towards your spine. Really take it and keep pulling it and keep bringing it down, down, down. Hold just for a second and release. Good. Again, inhale, exhale, and imprint your spine down towards your mat or your floor. Come on down, nice and easy and release and we are going to do just one more again bring that belly button in feel it flatten back in here your back flattens down towards your mat and then release now we're going to bring our legs up 90 degree angle here and then we're going to do the same thing you're just going to imprint push down you're going to find that it's a little more difficult and release, bring it back up. It's a little more difficult when you have your legs up. Bring it in again and release. And if you don't really feel it, it takes a little bit of practice. What you're doing is really just pushing. You see, you don't see a lot of movement through my legs or through my body, but if you look closely, you can see that my, if you watch my hands, my stomach goes down in because I am imprinting my spine into the floor and coming back up. Let's try one more. Bring it down and really push down and bring it back up. Good job. Now I want you to take your spine, take your belly button, bring it in towards your spine just so you have a neutral spine. We're not going to flatten it down all the way, but you're going to pull it in so that you can really feel the core of your body nice and tight. You're going to keep your legs up like this, but then we're just going to drop them down to the side nice and easy. 
and bring them back up to center. And then we're gonna go down other side, down to the other side. And you take your time here. The key to Pilates is keeping your movements nice and slow and even. Inhale, exhale, and bring your legs down. Inhale, pull them back up. Exhale, down other side. Inhale, pull up. And keep that rhythm going. We're gonna do two more. Exhale, come down. Inhale, back up. And then one more down other side. Exhale. And inhale, come up. Very good. Now, how, did you ladies feel that? Can you feel it back in your spine? Yes, you can feel it through your stomach if you're doing it correctly. You're not doing large movements, but you're really stabilizing through your spine. Now, we're just gonna take our feet and place them down on the mat, and we're gonna do a bridge. That's gonna strengthen your glutes, your back muscles, and your stomach muscles. So it's gonna go and do the entire area through here, through your trunk. You're gonna place your arms down to the side and you're just gonna feel as if you're lifting your vertebrae up, lifting your back up, just one at a time, trying to peel up off the floor, come up to your shoulder blades, and then you're just gonna slowly come back down and each part of your spine is just gonna hit the mat slowly. You're still coming down, 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 and release. Let's bring that belly button in first and then peel your back up off your floor. Peel it and just keep coming up, 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 up until those shoulder blades are coming off your mat, just at the bottom. And then slowly, slowly work them back down. Now Pilates is very good for your posture also. It will help you to improve your posture. You'll stand up straighter. Let's do another one. Peel your spine, your back, slowly off the mat. Very good. And just bring it down. Now remember, if this is difficult for you, you don't have to come up that high. You're coming up just enough to challenge yourself. Let's do another one. Pull up. Good and bring it back down. This is our last one down. Just feel each part of your back just kind of come down on your mat slowly, just rolling those vertebrae down onto your mat. Very good. Inhale, exhale, and we're gonna do single leg extension. So what you're gonna do here, air the legs are gonna come up again, and your head is gonna come up slightly but you do have the option of keeping your head down on the floor if it's too much for you. You can put it down at any time during the exercise. But we're gonna alternate extending our legs one at a time and the other one you're just going to pull in. So it's gonna look like this. Extend, and then you're gonna switch. Extend. Here. Good. So you can stretch the leg that you're pulling in with your hand, and the other one, you out, extend those toes out. Really extend them, bring them away and out from your body. And then we're just gonna add some breathing to this. Exhale, inhale, exhale. And at any time, if you need, again, to put your head down, you can. Good. Keep going nice and smooth. That's it. And you have the option, you see Cherie is taking another option of supporting her head and just extending her legs. So take the option that is comfortable for you. We're gonna do a few more really working those abdominal muscles. The lower your leg goes, the harder your abdominals work. And just one more on the other side. Good, pull both legs in, drop your head down. And now we're gonna work on obliques, which are the muscles on the side of our spine to support 
your inner organs and, and also again to support your low back. So we're gonna start out with our legs in that 90-90 degree. We're gonna place our hands behind our head and this looks like the regular obliques that we do when we do our exercises, our abdominal exercises, but they're slower. And when you slow it down, you can really feel it in your abdominals. So we're gonna be here and we're gonna extend one side and we're gonna turn and touch that knee and come back and switch other side. Exhale and come back in and again, exhale and come back in. And you are leading with your shoulder. So you're not twisting your head around. You are trying to bring your shoulder up and off the mat and then around and extend that opposite leg. Good, let's do a few more. Out, nice and easy. Come back down. And again, out. And down. Out, nice job. Let's do a few more. Out, good. Keep your elbows nice and open. Open up your elbows when you come back. And we'll just do two more. Out, good, and here. And let's do one more. And here, hug your knees in for just a minute. And I had a request for Mar from Mary Ann to do the 100. So, <laughs> So that is what we're going to do. And uh, the 100, believe it or not, it is a very good exercise if you want to flatten your stomach. It will flatten your stomach if you do it consistently. So what you do for the 100 is, again, we have our tabletop leg position, which is this 90, 90 degree angle here. You lift your head up, your arms come up like this. And remember, if you, for whatever, whatever reason, get tired, you can put your head down. Okay, but we're gonna have our head up. And you're just gonna take your arms, just gonna move them down like this, and you're gonna do 100 movements up and down. So you count five breaths in, five breaths out. It looks like this, I'll show you the first one. One, two, three, four, five, breathe in. You hear that? You're breathing in, out five times. See, you all did extra. That was the demo. But here we go, so extend and let's go. Down. Keep going. See that breathing? Keep going. Only a few more. Inhale. Exhale and release. Ah, we have to thank Mary Ann for that. <laughs> oh, okay, just release those legs a little bit. And then we're gonna turn over on to our, oh, well, we're not gonna do the turnover. We're gonna do a spinal twist then. We're gonna just sit up here, extend your back, trying to feel like there's something pulling your head up towards the ceiling. So you're gonna really uplift your body, lift your body up. And then you're going to take one hand, place it on your leg, and then turn. And try to turn around just as far as you can. If you can make it to look around over your shoulder, that's fine. Or you can look maybe to the center of the room, pick whatever's comfortable for you, and just turn and hold it. Excellent release for your low back. Excellent release, but you only go as far as you can and for what is comfortable for you. And then you come back to center and we're gonna switch. So place your hand on the opposite knee, turn and just switch it here and hold. Good job. And release. Now we have just one more movement that we're going to do and that's going to uh, stretch our 
leg muscles, especially through your hamstrings. So we're gonna do a spinal stretch, but as you may remember from me telling you, the muscles are connected through here and then through your spine and in the back of your legs. So if you find that you have tight hamstrings, you might wanna bend your knees just a little bit because we're just gonna come and we're just gonna stretch our spines forward and you're gonna feel that stretch back behind your legs and in your lower back. Just give it a good stretch forward and then come back up. When you come back up, bring that spine up nice and strong, lifting your body up towards the ceiling. And then we're going to come on back down. Exhale and come down. And really pull it out. Inhale and come up. And elongate your spine. Again, pull down. Exhale. And come up. Again, elongate, bring it up. Let's do two more. Come on down. Good, come down so you can feel that spine in the back just loosening up just a little bit. And come on back up. And we're gonna do one more, just one more. Come on down, forward. Really try to extend, extend past your toes, extend down. Good, keep going, keep going. And come back up and release. Now from here, we're just gonna do a couple of stretches to try to just cool our body down just to relieve um, some of the stress that we put on our back. And we're just gonna do a couple stretches for that. And one of the stretches that we do is called the cat's pose. And this stretches the muscles in your low back. So first of all, you're gonna come down on your mat onto all fours nice and symmetrical, and then you're going to pull your belly button again in towards your spine, just like we did on the mat, but you're in the opposite direction, and your back is going to come up. Your head is gonna come down slightly, and then you're gonna to come to a neutral position, which means your back is flat, and your head is up just a little bit, and switch again. Exhale, look down, pull that belly button in, and hold and release and come out, neutral position. Two more, down, and belly button in towards your spine, really pull it in, arch that back up and release. And we have just one more. Arch it up and release. And we're just gonna sit back, child's pose. Sit back here, sit back. And just feel that stretch through your back. Good, release, come up. Lie back down on your back. And we're just going to relax just a little bit. After Pilates and after yoga, you try to just lie back and relax. So I want you to lie on your floor, palms up. And you're just going to just not do nice, even breathing. Close your eyes. Breathe in and out nice and easy. Fill your lungs with air, breathe in. And then exhale. And again, breathe in. And exhale. Now this time when you breathe in, you're gonna take all that tension that you feel in your feet and ankles, and you're going to just release it, and then travel up through your legs, through your back, through your hips. Just release all that tension. Keep traveling up until you reach your spine. Just bring your spine down, just let it relax. Shoulders down. Relax your hands. And I want you to stay relaxed for a while. We're going to close now, but please stay relaxed.